would like to welcome you out to our public meeting this evening. We appreciate you all coming and we're especially grateful to the school for letting us meet here and thankful to Colleen for uh, letting us use the facilities here. So we're going to go ahead and start. My name is Sydney Jakes. I'm with Jakes and Associates and my company um, is contracted with COP Construction to do the public outreach for the project. So Dwight, if you can raise your hand. Dwight back there and then Scott, who you saw when you came in the door. Um, these are two of the guys that you'll see during the construction that will be out there working with you and, and helping you through the construction. So for our presentation tonight, um, we have Christine Finlinson, who's with Central Utah Water Conservancy District, and then Mark Breitenbach with Central Utah Water Conservancy District, and then we have Cash Tacky, who's with COP Construction. So we're going to do a, they're going to give us a, a great overview presentation of the project. And then Cash is going to talk a little more specifically about the construction. And then as you can see, we've got lots of maps and tables set up. We'd li love to answer your individual questions. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Christine. Thank you, Sid. Uh, I'm just want to tell you a little bit about Central Utah Water. I've been with Central Utah Water now for about 13 years. And Central Utah Water was created in 1964 to be the sponsoring agent for the Central Utah Project. And all of you have been, those of you that have been in this area have been hearing about the Central Utah Project for uh, many years. And now you get to see it up close and personal as it goes right in front of your house. We, this project is uh, part of the ULS or the Utah Lake System. And it is designed to uh, provide water to uh, the Wasatch Front. The pipe that will be going through this area will be delivering water into Salt Lake County. There is another reach that will be delivering water to the south end of Utah County. And Mark is, in a minute is going to um, tell you about that. Uh, the Central Utah Project is designed to bring uh, a portion of Utah's allocation of the Colorado River to uh, the Wasatch Front from the Uinta Basin. And there is a series of pipes, and uh, I think Mark's going to be showing you all about that. Um, our offices are right here local. We have our office there in, uh, in Orem, just uh, right across from Krispy Kreme, actually. Uh, we're local. It is very dangerous. It has been... It, it has been hazardous to all of our health, but, uh, but we're trying to resist. So we appreciate you, we appreciate you joining us tonight, and uh, uh, we want to uh, cash, I think, and, and Mark will be mentioning, but uh, we want to make sure that you are aware that we are open to your, uh, to your thoughts, to your ideas, to your uh, concerns that develop as construction goes on, and we want to hear from you. We have a hotline number that we'll have, we have cards for you all to take so that you can, uh, we are available 24 hours a day. And so uh, with that much of an introduction, I will ask Mark to show you a little bit more. Mark is our engineer. Uh, tell me your specific title, Mark. Uh, Mark is our project manager on this uh, project and he knows all the details. So. Okay, what I'm going to do is, um, is uh, there are some people are kind of interested and ask questions, where is this water coming from, and, and just in general, and then get into the specifics of what's going to happen on our street. So I wanted to just take a little bit of time, and I've modified this from some other presentations, and just kind of, first of all, take a little bit and show a few slides of wh 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 where is this water coming from, what project is it part of, and that. Then I'm going to... Uh, show the cross sections of each street as to what the construction is going to, the access is going to look like during construction. And then on these uh, drawings we have along the wall that kind of go in sections up the street, I'm going to bring those up and just talk about a few things while we're all part of a group about what's going to happen in each one of those street uh, st uh, sections. Cash Tacky with Cop Construction is going to talk about his scheduling and, and his construction work, but I'm more talking about the design. So I'm going to launch on in. Uh, basically this water, uh, uh, what you see up there is the Colorado River Basin. Basically uh, the water, it stretches up into Wyoming and goes down to the Gulf of Mexico. 
1922, that water was divvied up among states. The downstream states got about half of it, and, and Utah got about 1.4 million. You see in the upper part in olive color is Utah's entitlement of the Colorado River. So that was established back in 1922, but uh, only a portion of Utah lies within the Colorado River Basin. And there are projects out near Vernal in that, agricultural products, where Utah started to put its entitlement uh, to use for irrigation out there. But then there were also projects, the Bonneville unit that's shown there in green uh, straddles the divide. Uh, the area where we're at is the Great Basin. Everything drains to the Salt Lake and evaporates once it gets there. So Utah looked to uh, bring water for its municipal users along the Wasatch Front. So this project is developed to collect the water out in the Colorado River Basin, which we're entitled to have, and bring it through the basin into the into the Great Basin and distribute it along the Wasatch Front. The line down the center is the Basin Divide. Uh, if you've been out to Stillwater Reservoir, this water that's coming here is coming all the way from Stillwater Reservoir. There's a series of pipelines, aqueducts, that bring the water into Strawberry Reservoir in the lower center, which is very close to the divide. So there's essentially a collection system out there, and even Starvation Reservoir makes up the difference on keeping uh, river flows below Duchesne and the Green River going. And uh, basically the pipeline comes down through Diamond Fork Canyon into the Spanish Fork Canyon. At that point, we'll deliver water to cities in South Utah County, and one pipeline will come up through Provo to connect to the aqueducts on the Provo River system and go to Salt Lake. Uh, if you've been to Strawberry Reservoir, there's an area where people fish called the Ladders on the east side against Highway 40. This is the water coming in from Stillwater Reservoir being collected at the Duchesne and everything else flowing into Current Creek Reservoir and being brought into the enlarged Strawberry Reservoir where it's brought across the divide. This picture is Strawberry Reservoir. The old uh, project 100 years ago was about a quarter this size and it was the pioneers brought the first water through and that just collected the Strawberry River drainage. But with the Central Utah project, it's reached out farther into Rock Creek and the area is out to Stillwater and collected our entitlement of Colorado River water. Uh, half the water goes to cities in South Utah County. They get about 30,000, and there's two water agencies in Salt Lake County that, that get the other amount, makes up half. This is a map of the area. In the lower right-hand portion is Spanish Fork Canyon. Basically, the pipes come out of Spanish Fork Canyon. One comes up through Mapleton, Springville, Provo to the mouth of the Provo River, and the other one will go down to Sanaquin and deliver water to secondary systems in those towns in each city. Uh, has a water supply for its outdoor use. As part of this, because the water is um, is part of the development, in order to uh, to uh, make the water go as far as possible, there is water conservation requirement on the entities that take this water. They basically have to reduce their unit water use, the amount of water each person uses on a unit average basis over a 50-year period by 25%. And we're monitoring these agencies, and they're reporting their water use each year. And you see the black dots there in the start of the line. They're actually improving, and, but basically they are reducing their water. So water conservation is also a large part of this. This is Utah County, South Utah County. You can see they started with a much higher use, and, and the uh, amount of use per capita has, has reduced uh, dramatically since, the, since 2000. And there are substantial penalties if their water use actually goes above that line. So starting down the canyon, heading to our area, we're going to talk about tonight. If you've been up uh, starting in 2007 in Spanish Fork Canyon, you probably saw the construction along Spanish Fork Canyon. This is the water coming from Strawberry Reservoir. We used the slide rail shore system. We uh, kept two lanes of traffic going in each direction and had Jersey barriers, concrete barriers separating the traffic. Uh, as we moved on down, uh, you can see the pipe going in the ground. Um, Basically, the semis are going there. The traffic was kept open, and we moved on down. This is the pipe being laid as we come out the mouth of uh, Spanish Fork Canyon there by the wind farm. We were up against the rock cliff. Once we came out, we started to construct the north pipeline first, the one headed up to the mouth of the Provo Canyon. The one going south, the Santa Quin, will follow. We were along the west side of Highway 89 up through Mapleton. This shows uh, the pipe has been installed. The, the roads being repaved. Um, on the previous jobs we paved on the state highways, we paved half the roads. 
uh, you'll see that when we move into the cities, once we're done, we pave the entire street from curb to curb. So all of these streets will have new asphalt all the way across. And when we go up University Avenue, University Avenue, even though we're against the east side, it'll be repaved all the way across uh, the full width when we're done. This is in uh, Springville. Uh, here, because of the amount of utilities, we had to go pretty much down the center of the street and had narrow areas on each side. Uh, we also, because of the amount of utilities, had to be about 20 feet in the ground. This was much deeper than we'd be going. But you can see with the slide rail shore system, the, um, the area where the pipe is is kept as narrow as possible to have room on the sides for the trucks to go up. As we're doing our construction in these streets, we generally will be to one side or the other. So on some of the smaller streets, uh, particularly, let's say, 700 North, we will crowd the south side with this and keep, uh, keep one side open on the uh, north for local traffic. The street will actually be closed, but the local traffic can go through. Just pipe going in the ground. We were very, very deep in Springville. Uh, I'm going to pass over that. So um, it was about, uh, I guess it was a year and a half ago, we were in this room. And at that time, there were quite a few people here. And we were discussing the alignment of this stretch we're talking about tonight. We, uh, we had quite a few people participate in that, and this was the alignment that we ended up with. Basically, in the lower portion here, the pipe is in the ground to uh, 450 North, Seven Peaks Boulevard. The plan is to for the pipe to uh, continue up Seven Peaks Boulevard under this construction contract, go down 700 North over the 9th East, follow 9th East up uh, past the MTC, curl West on 2230 North, and then when we get to Canyon Road, Provo Canyon Road, we go north a short distance to the north end of the, uh, the BYU uh, intramural fields and then over to University Avenue. The contractor started this fall um, near the, um, I call it the Lime Green, uh, which is University Avenue. And he's uh, gone up just south of 3700 north. And we'll talk later, but it basically uh, he's got some time restrictions on when he can be in the city and out on University Avenue that is creating his need to, uh, to uh, start the construction in the city. Uh, if you pass down University Avenue and you look down this corridor, the, the contractor this week is, rela is uh, relocating a sewer line right here, and the pipe is going to go through out to University Avenue and connect in so that they can restore that portion of University Avenue up to 3700 North. So they're starting to do their cleanup there and restore the lawns on the east side. There's a map that's on the website. I'll let uh, Cash maybe talk about this later. But basically, the area in red, the contractor can work year-round, which is University Avenue. But like the area in yellow that's shown on this map, which is 9th East, and that he has a restriction of, of May 1st to August 15th. So he will be able to get partway up uh, 900 East. But because of uh, the, the timing of school in that, he'll have to then button up and come back in the summer of next year. Also, there's a further restriction that isn't shown on this map, but when we did our environmental assessment with the people here, we ended up uh, putting a further restriction that the area in front of this school from, I think it's 9th East to Birch Lane, uh, is limited to June 1st to August 15th. It can't be the month of May further. So there's another little stretch in there that has a one-month period also that's excluded. So what I want to do now is get to where we are for here tonight of the construction that's going to take place. Uh, I'm going to talk about what we laid out in that, and I'll let Cash talk about his construction schedule. But this is Seven Peaks Boulevard. So the plan on Seven Peaks Boulevard is this is from 450 North to 700 North, where the pipeline turns west, is that the pipe is generally along the west side of the road. The road will be closed with detours. Those people that need to get in along that will have a shared construction access with the uh, contractor to get in for local traffic only. Uh, when we get to 700 North, uh, the pipe will be on one side of the road, and this will be the same situation. Those people on either side of 700 North will access through 600 North or 800 North and then down the north-south side streets. And those people that live directly with driveways fronting on uh, 700 North will access along with the construction to their driveways. When we get to 900 East, there will be two lanes of traffic going at all times on the east side of the road. We're generally on the west side of the road here. Also, at the intersections, there will be left turn lanes. So in addition to the one lane each way, there'll be the left turn. When the contractor gets to one of the major intersections like University Parkway or that, 
uh, there'll be a time restriction that once he starts into that left turn lane, he'll have a certain time to get across that intersection and reestablish the left turn lanes. So uh, that's there. The other thing that's going to happen on 9th East is we are uh, are going to be undergrounding some of the overhead uh, power to the uh, to the street lights. Some of that will be put underground. There's a gas line in the street that's going to be put under the west sidewalk. So Questar will be up moving that gas line under the sidewalk. All of the sidewalks south of the MTC, that full stretch will be new sidewalk when we're done. Um, also, there's some other utilities that are going in and being relocated to make room for this. Um, the traffic signals also on uh, through the city, and we've done this on University Avenue already, are uh, the type that have loop detectors. When you pull up the intersection, they detect by loops in the ground. Uh, all of the uh, streetlight intersections are being switched over to new radar systems, so they're going to be more flexible and more state-of-the-art where the, it'll be radar detecting the vehicles and it allows the city to make uh, changes in, in the logic of the streetlights better. So all of the intersections are going to be retrofitted with radar going up. So there's quite a few things uh, in that intersection. As we move up to 2200 North, I'll come back and talk about this. It will be closed. It's similar to the others where there's one lane of traffic. Canyon Road's a little different than the others in that we will keep a dedicated, you see on the left there, there's a barrier. The southbound lane will always be there. Yeah, the construction work will be all east of that southbound lane. This, the northbound lane will be closed, but southbound will go on through, and it won't be shared with the, um, uh, inside the, uh, the construction barrier. So, so the southbound lane will keep going. It's kind of different on Canyon Road. So in touching through this, I just want to run, before I turn this over to, uh, to Cash here with Cop Construction, um, uh, Seven Peaks Boulevard, this is the alignment. We jog around a little bit because of some utilities we've got to relocate and, and some manholes. Uh, there is a UTA bus stop on this street at the intersection there with 7th North. UTA, UTA on the other cities, we work with them and they post a detour route in that, so that will be need to be taken care of. On 7th North, uh, we're going to go across here. Um, when we get to 9th East, there's going to be a structure. It's a low point. There'll be a structure near the south side of the road, and, and then we'll turn on to 9th East onto the west side of the road. Um, this is the stretch up to Birth Birch Lane. The Watch Wasatch Elementary School is shown there. Uh, basically, there's, there's quite a bit that's going to be reconstructed on the west. As we get into um, the area from Birch Lane, the University Parkway, BYU is tearing down the, uh, on the far left-hand side, that Heritage Lane, I think, is the Creamery. So everything on the west side, other than the Creamery, all those buildings are now demolished by BYU to make room for their new uh, um, student housing. Uh, through this stretch, um, I might point out we all have further restrictions where uh, we worked out with Provo City and that is like on University Parkway, if he's working here on the south side of University Parkway, he can't be working between University Parkway and South Temple. So there's, there's going to be planned access where people can, and, and you know, people will be notified through flyers on their doors and other things of what the traffic flow is at the time, but for those people needing to access, uh, they'll know how to go in and which direction the traffic is located. But in any event, there is two, one lane of traffic each way through this entire stretch. You, Ninth East is always kept open in the north-south direction. There will be some crossings, weekend crossings like University Parkway where they, they'll need to cross within a weekend and that'll be, um, public will be notified and scheduled when that occurs. When that occurs, then the other streets, uh, are, you know, the intersections are open. Uh, we will cross around the MTC. Uh, the contractors required actually has penalties if the MTC entrance is not open on Wednesdays. So um, we are basically going to be accommodating that. Uh, 2200 North and 2230 North, what we've worked out there with the city is that you see 2320 North is, uh, is, a, is just on the lower part is um, one block over and has the schools on it. Uh, what the city wanted to do is have the contractor work on one side or the other of where 2320 joins 2230 North. So when he's working between Temp View and the intersection with 250 East, 2230 out to Canyon Road will be open and no work will be there. And conversely, when he's working between 250 East and, Provo and Canyon Road over here on the right, 
there has to be unrestricted travel on 2200 North, the other direction, so the school can make a loop and get out. So there's restrictions like that. I, I touched on uh, Canyon Road. And um, um, like I said, on the west side, we'll keep it open. On the intramural fields, there's a tall fence that's about 42 feet off their north property line. We're actually between that fence and the north property line. So everything is still secured with fence on the intramural fields. And as you've seen this week with the construction uh, taking place, they're, uh, they're still out there on the fields playing in that. So that's all, all secured. And, uh, and then move out on University Avenue. Uh, this is just the, the map that's there. Uh, with that, I think I'll, uh, just kind of the big picture, and now I'll let Cash talk about maybe some of the specifics of the construction schedule in that. Thanks, Mark. So uh, Mark did a pretty good job here. I was scratching most of my notes off because he was covering most of it in his spiel here. But, um, so I'll just talk schedule uh, kind of briefly here. Um, maybe before I do that, just kind of some general scope of what we got going out there. You know, we we've obviously got the uh, the district pipeline going in, but uh, you know, on top of that, like Mark alluded to, uh, new roadways after we leave the area, um, new utility lines. We've got uh, some some sewer work that we need to do for for the city. There's new gas lines going in, new sidewalks, curb and gutters. So I think. Uh, I think when we get through the area and, and get out of your out of your town, you're probably going to end up with uh, with a better streets and better sidewalks and curb and gutter than, than before we showed up. So I think it's a good thing. Uh, so in, in March here, we're going to head, uh, head to Seven Peaks and uh, run down the Seven Peaks area. Um, as Mark kind of alluded to, when we're in the Seven Peaks area, we're going to uh, we'll close that road off to the through traffic, but uh, we'll keep it open to, uh, to the residents, local businesses, and uh, that is a shared construction zone. So. When you get in there, we'll probably have to have some flaggers or something out there. Bear with us a little bit. We'll get you through as fast as possible. But there's going to be trucks and equipment running out there, so we'll uh, we'll do our best to get you get you home as quick as possible. Um, there will be a detour in place for anybody that uh, you know is just looking to go go through the area and, and get around the construction. Doesn't doesn't need to be uh, get home or do a business or something. So uh, in April, we'll work our way uh, on 700 North. And work our way towards uh, towards Ninth East. Uh, same kind of scenario. Uh, we'll be closing closing the road to the through traffic. Um, share the construction zone with uh, with people that live there and the businesses. So same kind of scenario. Probably flaggers out there trying to help get people through and pass the trucks and, and safely through the zone. Uh, in May through the August time frame, we'll be working our way northbound on 900 East. Um, as you kind of saw in these drawings, the uh, the pipe sits on the on the West side of 900 East, which means we got to push traffic to the uh, to the east side. Uh, by the contract, we're required to keep two lanes of traffic going on 900 East at all times. So there'll be one lane in each direction. So it will will narrow up 900 East a little bit, but uh, traffic should flow through there just fine. Um, at the intersections, um, we are required to keep left-hand turn lanes open there. So if you've driven down University Avenue here in the last couple months, it's going to be kind of a, a similar scenario where we've got widen up a little bit at the intersections and, and allow those left-hand turns there at the light. So. In the, uh, the mid-August time frame, we'll, we'll pack up our operations. We'll, uh, we'll kind of pull out of the city and we'll head back out to University Avenue, uh, pick up about the 3700 North where, where we've stopped out there now, and uh, continue up University Avenue uh, pretty much through the whole winter until the, the spring of 2013. And then again in early March of 2013 through May of 13, we're going to go to 2200 North and uh, generally work our way, uh, uh, so start at North Temple and work our way towards Canyon Road. We'll make that turn at Canyon Road and we'll tie in there just to the, on the north side of those, uh, the BYU soccer fields. Um, the road will be closed through that area, except for the, the local residents, of course, again. Uh, detours will be in place and then uh, as Mark talked a little bit about, uh, Canyon Road, southbound traffic will be open, but it will be closed to, to northbound. So anywhere we've got roads closed or northbound traffic closed or something like that, you know, detours will, will be in place, signs will be up, you know, we'll get it communicated out to, to the public so everybody knows where they're going, recommended route, so hopefully it's easy. Then in, uh, in May of 13 to June of 13, we'll, uh, we'll go back to 900 East where we, uh, where we end up, uh, probably about the North Temple View area. 
and then we'll work our way to the north temple, which is where we uh, where we should tie in and, and hopefully have all the pipe in. Uh, again, two lanes of traffic, one in each direction, and uh, the left turn lanes open at the intersections. I think that's about all I got. Mark stole all the rest of my thunder, so. There, there are no, no planned shutdowns. So any, any sewers that we're working on, anything like that, we'll be bypassing them and, and have the provisions in place to, to keep everything operational. 